Perfect Strangers is a television series that started in 1986 and became known for its humor and heartwarming moments. It tells the story of Larry Appleton, a man living in Chicago, and his distant cousin, Balky Balticumus, who comes to live with him from a small Mediterranean island. The show follows their adventures as Balky learns about American life and culture while Larry learns important life lessons from Balky's often simple, yet wise perspective. The series is filled with laughs, surprises, and touching moments that have left a lasting impression on many viewers. While I don't have personal experiences or memories, I know that for some, this show has been a source of inspiration and joy. It has brought families together for a good laugh and sometimes even taught valuable lessons about friendship, family, and understanding different cultures. Now, we're curious to hear from you. What is your most memorable moment or personal experience related to Perfect Strangers? Your stories and memories are important to us and we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Keep watching because there are many more funny, shocking, and sad facts to come about this beloved series. And show it who's boss. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Never say die. If at first you don't say- Perfect Strangers, a show that aired during the late 1980s, captured the hearts of many with its unique blend of humor and family-friendly content. The series followed the comedic misadventures of Larry, and his distant cousin Balky, who often found themselves in hilariously over-the-top situations from over-tanning mishaps to Thanksgiving blunders. While the show was a staple of entertainment for many children and families, its appeal seemed to wane for some viewers as they grew older. The antics of Balky, characterized by his childlike naivety and the laugh tracks that punctuated every humorous scene, could sometimes feel overdone. Despite this, the dynamic between the two cousins was a highlight, showcasing a strong on-screen chemistry that many found endearing. The show was a regular feature on Friday nights for viewers looking for light-hearted amusement. Although it wasn't considered groundbreaking television, it provided consistent enjoyment and was a part of the cherished TGIF lineup. The legacy of Perfect Strangers is mixed. While it launched the spin-off Family Matters, opinions on the latter show very greatly. Nevertheless, Perfect Strangers remains a memorable part of television history for those who watched it during its original run. Like the seed thing. <laughs> One of you two has got to leave. In the heart of the show's humor and adventures was bulky stuffed sheep Dimitri, a silent yet endearing presence. The first home of cousins Larry and Balky, captured in the initial seasons, was a building that once stood proudly as the Santa Rita Hotel in Los Angeles. This structure has since been transformed, its upper levels removed, now playing host to a variety of small businesses. The duo's subsequent Chicago residence, showcased from the third season onwards, remains largely unchanged, nestled at the intersection of West Dickens Avenue and North Clark Street in Lincoln Park. The show's journey to the screen was a serendipitous one, with its inception planned for 1985. However, due to Bronson Pinchot's prior commitment to another series, Sarah, the launch was postponed. Following the cancellation of Sarah, the producers seized the opportunity to bring Pincho on board, paving the way for the show's debut in 1986. Loser! 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 <laughs> All right. you have got Initially hesitant, Bronson Pincho declined the role that would later define a significant part of his career, citing similarities to a previous character he portrayed. It was a trip to Greece that shifted his perspective, leading him to embrace the part, influenced by the local culture's warmth and hospitality. Post the show's conclusion, Pincho explored a new character in a sitcom that did not see long-term success, while his former co-star, Mark Lynn Baker, took to the stage, embodying a character with roots similar to his own on the show. Interestingly, the duo was slated to appear in a new series, reprising their well-known roles, but the segment was ultimately omitted due to time constraints during the pilot's development. I want folks like American woman. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sounds like you had fun too. <laughs> In a nod to classic television, the opening sequence of this show features the main characters heading to see The Odd Couple, a play that shares a network and a former time slot with the series. The name Larry Appleton pays homage to Lawrence University located in Appleton, Wisconsin. Bronson Pinchot, portraying Balky Balticumus, intentionally crafted an accent distinct from the character Lacagrabas of Taxi, ensuring Balky's unique identity and background remained a mystery. You wrote a check? For how much? $3,028.43. <laughs> In the landscape of television comedy, consistency in casting is a rarity. 
Yet, Mark Lynn Baker and Bronson Pinchot stand out for their uninterrupted presence across all 150 episodes of their show. Interestingly, the character Balky, portrayed by Pinchot, was not always Balky. Initially named Vev, his character's name was inspired by Pinchot's sister's dog, leading to the memorable and now familiar Balky. Furthermore, the show's connection to the city of Chicago is immortalized in its opening credits, showcasing Balky and Larry's adventures on a tour boat under a bridge on the Chicago River. This same bridge later became a recurring visual in the opening credits of the spin-off series Family Matters, creating a subtle link between the two shows. Good night. Good night. In the midst of family and unexpected friendships, the character Larry, one of the central figures of the show, is surrounded by a large family of eight siblings. However, viewers only get a glimpse of his brother Billy and sister Elaine, who make appearances on screen. The show's reach extended far beyond the expected audience, capturing the attention of notable figures such as Nelson Mandela. The former president of South Africa expressed his admiration through a note to actor Bronson Pinchot during a banquet, revealing his desire to meet yet restrained by protocol and all this admiration was further cemented when Pinchot had the opportunity to meet Winnie Mandela at the same event. Casting decisions also played a pivotal role in shaping the show, with Louis Anderson initially taking on the role of Lou Appleton. Despite filming a pilot, Anderson was ultimately replaced by Mark Lynn Baker, who brought Larry Appleton to life, creating a character that would become a household name. It is absolutely wrong. Gina needs to be in a neighborhood with good public transportation. I in the initial stages of a sitcom that became a staple of 1980s and 1990s television, Louis Anderson was cast as Larry, forming a duo with Bronson Pinchot's Balky. However, the producers decided to go in a different direction for the chemistry they desired, leading to Mark Lynn Baker taking over the role. Throughout the show, the bond between the characters is highlighted by Balky's endearing reference to Larry as cousin, a term of familial affection. Both actors, Mark Lynn Baker and Bronson Pinchot, share a common educational background, having graduated from Yale University with both a Bachelor of Arts and a Master's of Fine Arts and Drama, showcasing their shared foundation in the performing arts. I guess so. <laughs> so, you, you really think I sound like Cagney? In an interesting behind-the-scenes revelation, actor Bronson Pinchot, who played a key role in the show, shared that he chose not to wear underwear while portraying his character. This choice was a personal one and intended to add authenticity to his performance, reflecting his commitment to the role and the unique approach he took to bring his character to life on screen. Frank. <laughs> no, I mean, the sofa is broken. In the landscape of television comedy, the loss of a cast member can deeply affect the show's dynamic. For the series in question, the sudden passing of one of its directors, Joel Zwick, marked a poignant moment behind the scenes. Known for his skill in shaping the comedic rhythm of the show, his death left a void that was felt not just by the cast and crew, but also by the audience who had come to appreciate the distinctive touch he brought to the series. Zwick's direction contributed significantly to the success of the show during its early seasons, and his absence was a tragic reminder of the fragility of life, even in the midst of creating laughter. <laughs>